I'll start with you. So what do you think? Should the media, us, should we be backing off? I don't think so because I think LeVar Ball is largely a fraud. I think he's a carnival barking snake oil salesman that sooner or later will be exposed as the fraud that he is. And I think that the media's job is to shine sunlight on the truth. You don't hide from it. You don't ignore it. You don't let it cower in the darkness and grow and metastasize like a cancer. You shine sunlight, sunlight on it. And that is what disinfects it. So you cover it. But beyond that, beyond that, like, you know, this is our role as the media exposition I just gave, here's the God's honest truth. The media is a mirror. It's a mirror for the public. It largely tells you what you want to hear. Maybe not exactly the way you want it, but it'll tell you what you want to watch. It'll reflect your desires. That's because it's a profit-generating business enterprise, and ratings generate revenue. LeVar Ball, despite being all these negative things that I just said, generates ratings. Now, beyond that, beyond explaining to you why this gets so much attention, he's newsworthy. He's the father of the number two pick in the draft. And he has made himself a story. He has injected himself between Luke Walton and Lonzo Ball. He has injected himself between Magic Johnson and Lonzo Ball. He's injected himself between the Los Angeles Lakers and their star franchise player. That is newsworthy. You have a, a concoction here of ratings gold plus newsworthiness. It's our job to talk about it. I know people don't want to hear that. Now, I want to be clear. It's not our job to be an apologist for LeVar Ball. And I'll be honest, Max, on too many occasions I've heard you and I've said, no, 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 that's apologizing for abhorrent behavior. We talk about him, but in my estimation, it's our job to talk about him truthfully and call him the fraud that he is. I am no LeVar Ball apologist, not even a little bit. You are mischaracterizing um, my positions if you think that or you've misunderstood what I've said, maybe. Um, I will say this. The strong, we make editorial decisions in the press, in the media. We make editorial decisions. A lot of times it's gut decisions. We don't have a basis in fact, like, oh, LeVar Ball generates ratings. It's that when people sit in a room, producers, people on TV, people in print media, uh, you know, online, et cetera, you have a gut feeling. Boy, this is a big, colorful character. I bet you people will be interested and you start to, oh, this is a salacious thing that someone said. People might be interested in this. Um, but in this case, we also have evidence. So, like, that was done with LeVar Ball, and sometimes it's a positive feedback loop. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. We talk about him, so you become more interested in him because he's a character you're emotionally invested in, even if you root against him. And in this case, that's whether or not whatever dynamic led to this, he is a, a figure people care about because the 82 percent who said, yes, yeah, stop covering him, as, as was pointed out, the highest voting on any poll ever, meaning you're interested in him. LeVar Ball is a heel. In wrestling, it's called a heel. And a heel, a bad guy, is an important character in a drama, a big, colorful, excellent character to have. And finally, let me say, sports is entertainment. It is therefore a trivial subject. At times, life, inter life overlaps. Political issues overlap. Social issues overlap, and then it becomes less trivial and more like hard news. But this is not hard news. This is diversion. This is usually entertainment. And so to apply a hard news standard to an entertaining character, unless he does something like he makes misogynistic remarks and we have to take that seriously and talk about it and then ask the question, are we covering his every utterance too much, et cetera. But until it becomes something like that, it's distraction. People are emotionally invested in this heel, and I don't see why we wouldn't cover him. Well, that's why you can ignore the poll. Because the same people that are telling you to back off of the coverage is the same people that wants to see the coverage. So you don't have to take that seriously. The fact is, if it didn't resonate, if it wasn't considered newsworthy, then we wouldn't be covering it because it would serve no purpose. But it does serve a purpose because it's relevant. And it's relevant because of who he is and who his son is. And more importantly, how his bloviating positioned his son to be put in a position that some would say he wasn't worthy of being put in, which is a different subject for another day. Here's what it comes down to. You know, for me, it all depends on what the story is. If LeVar Ball uh, decided to uh, go off about the New York Knicks or go off about the Dallas Mavericks or somebody like that, it might not be as newsworthy. He's just talking. But if LeVar Ball came out today and said, I want my son traded, I don't like the job Magic Johnson's doing, who's not talking about that? Who's not covering that story? Who would dare say that that story is not relevant? His son is the point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers. That makes it relevant. 
you know, you got to remember, we have to take all of those things into consideration and understand how to connect the dots. You know, there were people that felt like LeVar Ball should not have been on our airwaves. Uh, uh, my, my buddy Mike Wilbon, who we all look up to, Mike Wilbon sat up there and was just, you know, he, he called the damn near journalistic malpractice because LeVar Ball was on SportsCenter. Well, LeVar Ball walked over to me on uh, opening night and came on with myself and Neil Everett on SportsCenter. In my opinion, you're damn right he should have been on. Because when Lonzo Ball went out on that basketball court for opening night, after all the talking his daddy had done in the months leading up to his debut, the person that had been talking so much about him was LeVar Ball. And so when he didn't play well, who's the person that you wanted to hear from? The same guy that said that he would have been better than Steph Curry. His son would have been better than Steph Curry if he were on the Golden State Warriors, and the Golden State Warriors would do this, that, and the other. As ridiculous as that sounds, he still said it, and it did have you looking forward to seeing what Lonzo Ball would do. But let's also not forget what role Magic Johnson played. The Los Angeles Lakers won in the Summer League. I repeat, the Summer League. And Magic Johnson went on camera and said, the Lakers are back because of the Summer League, okay? So LeVar Ball wasn't the only person bloviating about his son in the Los Angeles Lakers. It also happened to be Magic Johnson. You have to look at these things and understand how to connect the dots and what makes a story a story. Those are the kind of things that make it relevant. Those are the kind of things that make it newsworthy. And we know this because people read, listen to, and view that kind of banter. And that's why it's not just entertainment. It truthfully is hard right. news.